Hey. Ow. Hey. Really? Levels? It's episode 62. What? Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? And it's been a while, so that's why I'm surprised, because Alex took some time to be a person. I took some time to be a person. I was a little, I was kind of a person. I was a person playing a lot of golf in Portugal. That's what persons do sometimes. But it's, uh, mostly British persons who do that. Yep. What I learned, um, especially in August, everyone yeah. leaves the United Kingdom and goes to the south of Portugal. Yeah. They jam up the works and uh, all the restaurants are full of uh, no masks anywhere. <laughs> <Didn't Yeah. sell. laughs> Three weeks. Miraculously did not get COVID. Good job. Thank you. Um, I credit the booster and uh, the law of averages, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I sure. Don't know how, uh, it was avoided. Neither one of us. There's uh, a happy CDC news regarding COVID, which is that even during the last couple surges, there are surges upon surge upon surge. But in a number of the more recent surges, the number that didn't go up were fatalities. We love it. And there's some speculation that at least on that level, we may have something like herd immunity. Enough people who've been exposed to it, even the idiots who won't get the vaccine, that there's enough baseline immunity that it's less serious. Still serious. It's not it's something... It's yeah probably harder a little harder for it to spread even as it evolves um it would be great if we developed herd immunity to death right yeah <laughs> all COVID aside yeah like if enough of us die yeah we get herd immunity yeah there's and i'm no scientist i can see some problems with that because mm. to get to get the the Im immune in your immune oh, system, yeah. you got to die at least once. Right. So you have the antibodies. So you have the antibodies. So we should all have near fatal heart attacks, but just <laughs> near. <laughs> well, right. that do it. Yeah, that would we should, let's all everybody sign up for soul cycle <laughs> <laughs> and go in have like a triple espresso. Yep. On two hours sleep and go to Soul Cycle, and eat as many burgers as I've been. Oh yeah, for sure. Eat like I did in Portugal. Oh yeah. What do oh, you eat the most of there? The most of is alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I ate a lot of alcohol. <laughs> what do we mostly eat? There's a lot of cheese and meat. Oh, great. Um, but also a lot of like grilled fish. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. We foolishly went to a, a sushi place uh, that without checking it out first. And we sat at the table and uh, the waitress showed us on the menu that it was 15 euros. All you can eat. It's not the way to eat sushi. Yeah. And um, so we're like, oh, great. We'll have these three things. And when they came out, they were very sad looking. Oh, you yeah. ate them anyway yeah. out of some weird uh, tourist shame. And then <laughs> they both were like, oh, we, we couldn't possibly eat anymore. Check, please. Yeah, that was all we could eat. Yeah. That Ugh. was it. Um, uh, but yeah, they love their meats. Yeah. Uh, the all you can eat sushi place is uh, every now and then you'll get one that's really good. But that's because it's fifty dollars or something, and that's fine. Right. Yeah, they can't do if it's twenty bucks. Get out. Yep. There's and sometimes the, it's okay, but those places are dangerous because those are the ones that are super strict about. Yeah, but if you don't finish it, you're paying extra. Oh, uh, weird. Have you ever done that, by the way? Where that cool? You've never had that happen to you? No. Oh yeah, it's pretty funny because. At an all-you-can-eat sushi place, it's often the rule. You can order anything you want, but you have to finish it. You can't take anything to go. And they usually have all these rules on the menu. And whatever you don't finish, you have to pay for. 
because you're not supposed to leave stuff behind. This is all you can eat, but we make it fresh. Huh. And one time a buddy of mine and myself, my buddy Walker, man, we went one round too far. <laughs> and we had all this effing sushi in front of us. Oh, you painted yourself into a corner. And we were like, oh, okay, well, let's do this. <laughs> so... <laughs> We kept eating and we were uncomfortable. Oh yeah. And and also all you can eat sushi if it's good fish is often just I don't know if this usually has this much rice in it. It's always a big uh -huh. lumpy hunk of rice. Oh yeah. They put it on top of a pancake. Right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, man, Lord. It just kicks your butt, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm not necessarily sure all you can eat is the best way to go, but we still do it because both of us are are uh, overindulgent dummies. Yeah, and you're attracted to danger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> danger then, is your uh, confirmation name. <laughs> oh, God, what a good joke! <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Whatever version of that I was going to do, I don't want to do because I like that joke a lot. Right. Danger is my confirmation name. I really like that. Uh, so save that. That'll be your third joke when okay. you do stand up with Mulaney. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> uh... All right. Now, listen, here's the thing. We picked a song. You picked a song. You look so good to me. That's like, a fairly tiny song. Like a month ago, I picked a song. Indeed. And that's good because we have a lot to cover, including billy joel stuff oh yeah have you seen the clip of olivia rodrigo at madison square garden with billy joel i've not seen the clip i've only seen like the backstage photo they took it's great it's so great and i'm reminded of why non-musicians need to shut up a lot about opinions about musicians yeah because Non-young musicians, non-young people who like music often just don't like old people music. And old people who aren't musicians often don't like new music. But musicians are great to listen to because they just like music. Yeah. And you've got Olivia Rodrigo who, why would she like Billy Joel? Why? He's such an old man because she likes music yeah and she knows what it is and how it works yeah and why would billy joel want her there he's an old man because he's a musician great and there was something so beautiful about the clip and i gotta say i loved the side hug he gave her Oh, uh, yes, good move. Because she came in for a nice hug and said, I love you, and was very effusive. And he said, I know how old you are. <laughs> yep. And I yep. was like, God bless you, Billy Joel. You're nailing this. And he looked great. Yeah, he does look great lately. This is the age she was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> As we've said. Yeah. He was always 75. Yeah. Huh? 73. 73. Dude. And the and it was great. And it's because she has a song that references Uptown Girl. Uh, and somebody came up with the idea. I don't know if it was her idea or his. But I always like when there's a new artist who does a little something with an old artist that's respectful. Like Miley Cyrus did a thing recently with uh, Stevie Nicks. Right. Her her big hit uh, is um, just like a wild is I don't know. Anyway, don't she know, does yeah. like a she, dance song that incorporates. Yeah, and they did it live together. I always like that when the older generation person says, "I like new people." <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I went to see Elton John not long ago. And uh, there's, I can't remember who the new artist is who uses uh, Rocket Man. Right! Um, he did it in the weirdest way. That artist wasn't there. So it was on the Jumbotron. And then little Elton John sitting in his piano just did his part in front of the Jumbotron while the video played. Yeah. 
it's a it's a good version of rocket man because it's legitimately wildly different from the original yes very much so what you want in a cover yeah it's a it ups the game yeah yeah i heard it the other day and i was like oh i don't hate this that's neat (laughs) (laughs) right don't you love it when you don't hate new shit yeah Uh, this is a text from my mother (laughs) that's what she thinks the text is (laughs) it's fantastic uh she's confusing text with novella yeah well she's italian (laughs) well fair enough yeah (laughs) um uh, her knees hurt and that's probably mostly what that text was about largely what it is and then some names of medications and then there's oh yeah knee uh, ice putting ice on it uh yeah it's it's 91 degrees in sierra vista arizona and uh, she's gonna have a salad yeah your next text will just be her listing off possible side effects she heard from the commercial i think that's where she learned the length right yeah (laughs) mom why did you send me a picture of these old people biking that's weird (laughs) (laughs) that's great the other thing okay so listen i might be a genius sometimes sometimes oh i don't want to show you nothing i hope you didn't see too much I'm i'm hiding the surprise uh uh, a year ago, I was having a conversation with somebody, and they were saying, it's so, I'm so mad Merrick Garland is not even investigating um, this thing. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like, don't be dumb. He's investigating. Hey, close your eyes for one second. I don't want you okay. to see this picture. Okay. I'll do this. All right. I am back. Uh, my cat was just making racket, trying to get out the door. I was wondering. Yeah. Um, a year ago, there some people were like, he's not even investigating. And I said to them, I go, I may not know everything, but what I do know is early on in an investigation, in an investigation of any kind, if you get a lot of details, somebody's made a mistake. Yeah. They don't tell you. They don't tell anyone. They're, They're not supposed to. When you're a, a cop and you're doing a stakeout, you don't honk. <laughs> right? Yeah. You just sit quietly and watch for a super long time. Yep. Until you're pretty sure you know what's happening. Then you honk. And then you move. Right. Yeah, you, then you honk. Yeah, exactly. Then you move quickly. <laughs> and so that's what I said. And and uh, these were people I respect. This was not an argument with numb nuts. It was just a conversation. And then right after our last episode, all this happened while we were on vacation, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, a lot of wonderful things happened to Trump. Yeah. It was so great. Really great. It's a terrible time not to be doing a talk show. Oh, God, yeah. But I imagine they will continue. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, oh, my God. I'm, listen, he's going to jail. He just is. Oh, I think so. Yeah. And I said that before, and people are like, wah, 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 wah. and that's exactly how they sound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sounded like that for a long time. Yeah. And then you... Like, oh, he's gotten away with it for 50 years. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the other true thing is, like, he wasn't getting away with it. We all knew. <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, the the dumbest thing he ever did was run for president because he could have just kept being a criminal. Yep. For free, having fun. Yeah. And, and the other thing is like on the phone with lawyers all day long. He's so miserable. Yeah. And I'm, I know it sucks that the system works this way, but here's the other thing. If you're a criminal rich person, don't piss off a bunch of other rich people. Yes. Because they're pretty good at being blind eyes. They'll do that. Right. But they don't have to. No. Also, if they have all these other rich people, billionaires, politicians, had a perfectly good grift going very quietly. Yeah. <laughs> siphoning money. And then he came along and uh, like turned all the lights on. 
Yeah. And they were like, hey, man, you're fucking with our grift. Yeah. You know, today, the uh, it, you can never, you cannot trust the Republican Party to tell you the truth, but you can trust them to indicate the truth through their other actions. Yeah, so it's like when there's a planet and you, you can't see the planet, but you can see the other planet being pulled by a gravitational field. Exactly. Or that. Yep, it is exactly that. There's a fat orange something in the way. And uh, <laughs> what he did, it, what they did is the uh, Republicans are no longer paying his lawyer fees. I saw that just today. And they're everybody's going talk they're talking about DeSantis, who by the way will not win. He's not interesting or good and he's screwing up anyway. Yeah. I'm telling you who will win. It's going to be Biden. He's killing it. He's killing it. He's uh yeah. It's the summer of Joe. The angry Biden is the most coherent Biden because he's had a stutter his whole life. Yeah. But when you're pissed off when you're saying stuff like, you know, when you're calling out people for being for their malar malarkey, um, <laughs> when you're mad, I, I'm a lot. A lot of times I'm like this, too. I I will misspeak a lot. But when I'm really focused and angry at just, you know, nonsense and he's doing this smart thing, which is he's drawing a distinction and calling out MAGA Republicans and giving other republicans cover to leave right politically yes. smart genius because why so many democrats i know why it's you don't want to because you're mad at everybody for not doing the right thing i get it but right. you kind of gotta accept that the world works that way and give let them have cover yep. you know well, let, let it let him be the shopkeeper who says i didn't know what the germans were doing just let him be that yeah because that that way is the road back to not normalcy normalcy is a nonsense word but some level of balance yeah oh my goodness yeah so yeah, I've, been, some... I've been enjoying the hell out of all this <laughs> <laughs> so much so that i will just watch people spin out of control and i'm like I'm not going to comment until the conviction. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just watching now. Yep. So my Twitter feed lately has just been jokes about stuff. Fucking great, bro. Yeah, just one joke after another, silly jokes. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm at peace now, you fuckheads. <laughs> yeah, I'm finding my own balance. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tune in for the finale. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God. All right, now let's talk about this song you picked. It's very pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty little song, right? Yeah, it really is. I like it. Um, it's it's Beatlesque, I guess, maybe. Sure, I think everything probably early on was. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else it reminds me of because. I was like, is this Beatles esque or is that just me going for an old comparison? Because it's something else. It feels, well, it's very simple. I'll say that. Very simple. It's brisk and brief. Yeah. And very positive. Yeah. I think we're doing two in a row of songs that are a little odd lyrically for Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah. Because a room of their of our own was we were we discovered was just very out of character. No one was being blamed. No, a lot of emotional maturity. Yeah, and this one it couldn't be emotional maturity because I mean the dude was in his twenties at this point. Yeah, and he still had that mustache. Yeah. Been high on a lady. Yeah, I'm not worrying about it yet. Yeah, true. That is a funny place to be in, isn't it? <laughs> Talk about brisk and brief. Yeah. So um, the intro is pretty. The piano's pretty. The music's pretty. Uh, the 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 uh, engineering's a little weird, which is the whole album's issue, right? Out of whack, yeah. The engineering's a little b bizarre, um, but not it's what were they trying to do? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 
because it feels like they were trying to be fancy for a moment at the beginning and i just think they either didn't have the money or they just didn't nail it I feel like yeah i feel like they didn't have the money and they were trying to sound like they had more money than they did uh yeah yeah that is very truth i mean you certainly have friends who are in bands and i certainly have had those and they will make a little album and there'll be all kinds of like tricks on it try to yeah. make the song sound different from that song <laughs> yeah sounds like i'm sing singing through a megaphone yep right, but yeah you don't need it no you just shouldn't and and if you do need it maybe you're not a good singer <laughs> possible <laughs> mary joe mary joe has had three albums so far mary joe's my wife for those of you who don't remember and uh none of them have been big budget albums but the reality is she's an incredible singer so yeah. there's the song of hers that she did on somebody else's album called never saw blue and uh look it up by the way it's really good and uh every now and then she'll get like fan letters oddly enough from like germany <laughs> and uh, we were trying to figure it out and what we eventually figured out is oh it's dudes stationed in germany or it could be ladies stationed in germany but it's still americans mostly but it's a really pretty song and they do one trick and the trick is that the and this is the trick you do if you're a good singer is that at some point the music drops out and you just hear the vocalist oh yeah great well that anti trick yeah exactly yeah you go bare bones suddenly and you just hear the pretty sound and that's a trick people do on expensive albums if the person's good. Yeah, right. It uh, reminds me of, is it Rick Rubin who did the Johnny Cash album where it was basically him and a guitar and a microphone and they recorded in like a cabin somewhere with no tricks or anything. Yes, it was Rick Rubin. You're right. I, I'm still hoping that like Billy Joel will do something like that. I think that would be lovely. Yeah. That'd be dope. And then that's a perfect excuse to re-record yep. 10, 10 songs that you always loved and one or two that are for sure just hits. Yeah. But that's when you take a Cold Spring Harbor song you actually really like too. Because honestly, as we've gone through this album, it's kind of a mess engineering wise, but it's not a bad album. No, they're perfectly pretty songs for the most part. And a couple of garbage ones, but not many. Most of them are perfectly good. Every album is a couple of garbage songs. Yeah, and especially if you're new to this, this was young Billy Joel. Yeah. And you know what would be great is if he did that and uh, regrew that stupid mustache. <laughs> <laughs> like he'd have to color it in. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> because with the gray, I like his facial hair now, but he's got this thing, which fixes this thing right you can't have the top half yeah no you need that second half to make us think oh yeah yeah you're just a guy who's chilling not uh i don't know you're gonna hurt somebody i'm gonna get datelined <laughs> <laughs> and you know he would never dateline you because he goes for the side hug right but he does have a boat oh that's true he's got a boat <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right bust you do first since you picked all right, I'll do this first. Looks so good to me is the song. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you look so good to me. With my eyes wide, oh, whoa. with my eyes open wide, I can see. Ah, you feel so good to me. And it's so good when you're here, cause I'm free. Well, that couldn't be simpler. Yep, and, but also, Clarity, I like that in the sense that I know what he's saying, how when there's a person there that does it for you and you feel better than when you're when they're not there, that's a lovely feeling. And it, it's nice when you maintain it throughout a relationship. It is often a beginning of a relationship feeling. Yeah, and sort of impossible to hold on to. Especially, yeah, because especially when at some point you have shared bills. Yeah. And almost any time you're with a, someone, anyone, for any reason, you're less free <laughs> than yeah. you are alone. Yeah. When, it, when you somehow feel more free with a person present, it is um, like drugs. 
Yeah, yeah. And it does, in fact, work exactly like, uh, well, Molly. It works exactly like that. Like me plus. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Lots of good. So yep. much repetition of the word good. Now, is it my turn? I can't tell the way this is broken up, or is it your turn still? I don't know, but there aren't many words, so let's ping pong it. Okay, cool. That works. Uh, when you're here, because I'm free, I'm feeling the glory from that smile upon your face. I like that. You lifted me high above my ordinary place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I'm so happy when I'm in your warm embrace. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. It's funny that they feel they have to write that down. I'm feeling the glory from that smile upon your flip face. That is a lovely way to describe a smile. I don't think I've heard that often. Feeling the glory. Very uh, soul-ish. Yeah. Soulful, but it's not really soulful. It's more soul-ish. Yeah. But I, not, yeah. I'm going to remark upon the use of the word upon. Why not just on? <laughs> Is it because you're a young songwriter and you think fancy words make your song better? Um, or is it the 70s? Oh, your face. Oh, well. I oh. think it's a young songwriter. Yeah. Remember, I took a, a poetry class in college. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and they, the first assignment was just write a poem your style and we'll talk about it and i got pilloried for using lots of like apons and alasses and lots of what i thought was fancy poetry language right I, got, I was mocked to pieces and then uh i stopped doing that <laughs> I think probably young songwriters go through that a lot too did you at the time did you feel like hey this is unfair but later on you're like yeah good point or did you immediately go oh i see what you mean i think yeah i think i was like oh okay oh okay so because you were there to learn isn't that okay yeah i thought like oh poetry means like elevated language and fancy words and he's like no it means like capturing images with perfect language i was like oh okay i'll try it uh, next time yeah yeah, I, I, I wrote a poem years ago that would, that, here's how the poem goes. And I always liked this poem because it's just dumb. Uh, I dug a little t hole into the sullen ground. I dug a little deeper and this is what I found. I found that if I dug, I could dig some more. And no matter how much I dug, all I dug was floor. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that nice and stupid? Yeah. I, I think that subgenre of poetry, kind of dumb, fun poetry, like, you know, the purple cow and all that stuff is a fun little subgenre. The best. It's a nice little corner. <laughs> yep. And uh, and I always thought that about poems, too, like Thanatopsis. You remember Thanatopsis? Yeah. Vaguely. Hate, hate the shit out of that poem. Yeah. Because you get forced to read it, and then they go, isn't it deep? And I'm like, so the point of the poem seems to be that death sucks. And I got to tell you, at my grandpa's funeral, I got it. <laughs> yeah. None of us were on the fence. <laughs> yeah. Weird argument to make. Yeah. Cookies are good. All right. Huh. Okay. Well, this guy seems to think cookies are good. Maybe I'll give him a second chance. Ah, make your cake. <laughs> I always hated that poem so much. And... I think I hated it the most because I think the only reason we covered it is because my teacher wanted us to hear her read it. Oh, yeah. One, of, one of the traps of uh, poetry classes. <laughs> they don't have, like, oh, watch this. Like, yeah. you could write it. Yep. And that's, you know, you're not better than the, you know, drama director who casts themselves in a part. <laughs> right. I'm grateful, by the way, none of the drama teachers I ever had did that. It's yeah, just no. what I heard about that nightmare, because I'd always had good drama teachers who just let us do the stuff. I'm like, God, that must have sucked. And college is one thing. And then when you hear about people in high school who would do it. 
<laughs> Jesus, you suck. You're the worst. Yeah, yeah. Stay on. Stay. You you make, chose your path. Why you'd never go into like you know algebra and the teacher would go all right today you're gonna watch me do algebra and then he just quietly does it and goes see I did it <laughs> never do that oh although I, that I might have preferred true <laughs> I was bad at that <laughs> yeah good at poetry or algebra yeah can't do both I always wished I was better at math because I like math hypothetically. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It has, there's nothing real in it. Yeah. Oh, see, well, Everything for something. Yeah. And it drove me crazy. You know what's funny though? Because I used to think that too, but I think now there's more real in math when you come down to it, in yeah. that everything can be expressed. And also math, regardless of the language you use to describe it, you know, whether, you know, you're, however you say two, two is two. And if every, if we lost all of math, it would reemerge more right. or less the same. Yes, it exists in the world. Yeah. We just found a language for it. But yeah, maybe math teachers did a poor job of explaining that. They definitely did because part of being good at math means you're probably not good at social stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And right. now you're a teacher. Yeah, it's hard for you to teach people. My uh, my algebra teacher in uh, high school used to go up to the blackboard and point at it like this. Oh, great. And I know he was doing it on part purpose, and we <laughs> loved it. We were like, he's pretty great. He hates us. <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm feeling the glory from that smile upon your face. You lifted me high above my ordinary place. That feels like the line that you're like, well, that rhymes. Yeah, although I like ordinary. Yep. And I'm happy in your warm embrace. Like Even you. Place wasn't terrible before. Yeah. Ordinary. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's not like horrific. It's just this is better. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it is very. These are the lyrics that you'd write at this point. Yeah. Uh, it's very much, this is your teacher assigned you a poem and now they're going to make fun of you for using a pawn. Yeah. And uh, they say, well, there's not much going on in this poem. Yeah. But it's nice. And is that's kind of neat in a way because it's just, he just is happy as girls there. And it's certainly something to be happy about. It's worth a song. Yeah, agreed. Probably the most common theme. <laughs> yeah yeah uh really name 2000 yeah i know you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah you look so good <laughs> with my eyes open wide i can see uh you feel so good to me and who knows what your next move will be the closest thing to cynicism in the song i guess yeah who knows is it cool that he goes open wide versus wide open? Or is that just, you know what I mean? Because typically, wouldn't you say with my eyes wide open? I think it is cool because I think wide open sounds like a cliche. Right. This is still but less of a cliche. Is it in, on purpose or just turned out that way? I think it's on purpose because... It seems so specific. It's probably also better to sing. Yeah. It feels better in your mouth. Yeah. Than eyes wide open. Yeah, the, this was an early precursor to tonic and gin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, that's another thing you get lambasted for. Switching words around to make a rhyme. Yeah, and justifiably so, because unless unless it evokes something right unless you're like no no it's on purpose for this reason right. but the reader should be able to discern that without you saying it if yeah. it's true inversion of the natural word order uh yeah. that's called anastrophe i did not know that so at least you learned yeah and Talking if i did know that i forgot about it but that's that's Talking cool uh mars bruno <laughs> Uh, and you have one more one more word to just say how 
one more will line. Oh, I just have, and who knows what your next move will be. Is yeah. There, uh, do, do, do? No, no, no. I thought that you had, I didn't think you had said that yet. Cause I, cause you're right, man, who knows what your next move will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cynical. It's not hopeful. It's guarded. It's guarded. It's a question. Yeah. Uh, so it just doesn't inform us in any yeah. way. You're like, yeah, we don't know either. It's yeah. Your but it's funny because you say it's, you know, Billy, jo it's a little bit of cynicism. And because we know Billy Joel over the years, we're like, yeah, that's what that is. Because in the back of his mind, he's, even right. if he didn't put it in the lyrics, he definitely thinks that. Yeah. <sighs> so it's, it's decent storytelling because that is certainly the next thought you have. Yeah. You come down from your high a little bit. And you're like, oh, fuck. You gonna fuck the mailman? <laughs> If this was, it feels it like an underwritten song, maybe a little bit, and that's fine. Not like I hate it. I think it's a nice song. A bridge would, this song might benefit from a bridge. Certainly has room. Yeah, it definitely, and and who knows what your next move will be, would be the perfect place to put your bridge. Oh, it yeah. could just be a bridge about things that could go wrong, hope that they don't, because you look so good to me. And a little musical change. And I wonder, this is before he learned that trick, maybe. <laughs> it may be. Or there's a good chance there was a bridge in there. And somebody was like, hey, that bridge stinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. could easily be that. How did you list five terrible things she might do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, what if you're, and they're all weird ones, like, but what if you walk through a paint, paint, paint glass window and now you don't look good to me? Right. And it's all weird ones like that where you're like, well, why did it go that direction? Or you're just yeah. imagining her getting scars. What if you start bringing home birds? <laughs> oh, I think, oh, man. If, your next <laughs> uh, and then it ends with a repeat of what we've been saying before. Ah, ah. <laughs> you look so good to me. With my wise open, my eyes open wide so I can see. Ah, you feel so good to me, and it's good when you're here, cause I'm free. Man, that's not. By the way, just say that a little bit Jewish. It feels, <laughs> and it's good when you're here. The whole thing. That's that's a lovely, just simple sentiment that to me sounds better if you make it a little Jewish. <laughs> well, I wonder if that's just a. Just a little of the childhood seeping in. Yeah, for sure. When you, it's nice when you call. <laughs> yeah. I uh, one time, so when I was first look exploring Judaism, I met this nice lady. She had a nice dog that had gotten hit by a car. It was very sad, but uh, we found their, her dog, and the and we were with the dog and nursed the dog and tended to it and made sure it wasn't alone when it passed him. It was very sad. Found the owner, it was a very nice Jewish lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up having Shabbos dinner with her multiple times because she was just very grateful that we had been there for her dog. And she would talk like this, oh, lovely, they, they, all that stuff. It was just so nice hearing her with a classic New York Jewish woman. It's great. And she was just about the most gentle person I'd ever met. And. Uh, she would let me say the prayers for Shabbos, and she would say, "Ah, do you, you speak Jewish? You're not Jewish, huh? Um, what, what is it? What is it? Not Yiddish. Um, um, what am I trying to remember? Man, my brain. I don't know Hebrew. Hebrew. <laughs> Hebrew is the word. So <laughs> gee, they're a pretty good Hebrew accent. I'd say, well, that's good. Someday, maybe I'll know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, yeah. But I've just like found it so comforting just hearing these just sort of gentle aphorisms just no you know it's just nice that you're here it wasn't that ah, was good ah this is a fine song there's nothing wrong with this song perfectly fine there is yeah For, yeah exactly but there's no way it ever got played on the radio oh, i wouldn't think so and I don't think there's any way anybody would have even went and soundtracked it. Where you go, why is this on a soundtrack? Which seems to just happen with a lot of weird Billy Joel songs. 
Well, you know, this one, I there's a website that I sometimes go to for these. Uh, what is it called? Genius.com. Um, and you can put in any sort of song title and it'll say, it'll tell you a little bit about the history of the song and oh, okay. recorded and who it's about and who else recorded it and stuff like that. And I just looked up this song and there's literally just a blank page. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. There's nothing to be said about it. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because it's also a testament to the fact that it's not bad that it's a blank page because yeah, nobody's there complaining about it either. People loves to do that. Oh hell yeah! I know I do. So. <laughs> You're one of the best. Yeah, I am mad about a lot of stuff. I have no business being mad about. <laughs> A perfectly nice song but yeah you you wouldn't like they're making a playlist you probably wouldn't put it on there no if you're making a playlist for somebody else i think i would put it on a playlist for somebody else just because i think oh this will be perplexing and i like that <laughs> like don't yeah, wonder they, why i put this here you wait for the text that says who the fuck was that you know what that was billy joel oh my god and then the one, the follow-up text, all right. <laughs> <laughs> if I was making a playlist of seven songs from Cold Spring Harbor, I don't think I'd put this on it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to put, if you're going to make the seven songs, you have to put the one that we like the least, because you might as well. You've decided to make a Cold Spring Harbor playlist. Yeah. I mean, that's your fault. <laughs> and leave out three songs. <laughs> that's all. And you'd put the one that's got no words. I think that's got to be one of them. Because you might as well, since you're representing this album. Yeah, Nocturne, baby. Yep. Him, the fact that he's got songs without lyrics reminds me of times when you'd get an album by, like, Steve Martin. And, you, you know, back when you were like, oh, a comedy album. And there'd be way more banjo than you expected. Oh, yeah. And you'd be kind of mad because you'd... I would, because I think, I know you're good at the banjo, but that is not why I bought the album. Right. But, and, you know, looking back, you're like, oh, I like that there's banjo on it. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, it definitely, it encapsulates who he is as a person, for sure. Because he's yeah. a guy who likes the banjo more than about anything else. He was moving it all forward when we weren't ready. Yeah, true. Very, very true. Uh, Fucking dick. It's like uh, when you watch, uh, do you occasionally watch an episode of Seinfeld? Yes. And um, has your opinion about who is the best character changing all the time? Yeah, absolutely. As over the years, for sure. Who's the best character? For me, it's Elaine. Yes. Rock yeah. solid. It was George for the longest time. Um, it moves around. Yeah. It was when it was on. It was just happy to see Kramer every week. Sure. Like, you know, who was killing it constantly it was Elaine. Yeah. yeah. And you know who was the most a person who could exist was Elaine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Even Jerry is a person who kind of, but not quite because he's such a bad actor. Such a bad actor. And he, you know, it was all written to make him an everyman, which yeah. is not. Yeah playing against type in a weird way. Yeah. Elaine had like a dad who was mean. Yeah. Was a lot of real things in her life. One Where, of my, yeah. One of my, like, go ahead. Sorry. She had like shitty boyfriends that she liked anyway. Yeah. A very real <laughs> problem in life. And would end up back with them. Yeah. Yeah. Real behaviors. Yeah. And you know, it's gotta be because all the characters to some degree were based on somebody real but the person she was based on also wrote for the show ah the great elaine boozler oh the best who now lives what in it? where does she live she lives in italy oh good for her jimmy christmas oh. she she did the this joke first from the female perspective she said i don't have any kids that I know of was the first person to do that turn on that joke. Best. 
she got banned from TV briefly for an amazing joke about breasts because we live in a sexist, stupid society. Yeah. And the whole joke was just she wishes she had different ones for different occasions. Like, she's like, I got the little ones for jogging. Oh, I might get a speeding ticket, so let's put on the big ones. And there was this really lovely joke. Oh. Yeah, I fucking love Elaine Boozer. Yeah, yeah, Elaine, absolutely. And you're right. At the time, no. It was at the time, of course, it was any of the boys. You're <laughs> right. But Lord is, I mean, my God, what an amazing actress. Just looking back at her career, it, re look at her SNL stuff and you realize, now that was funnier than you remember. Yeah. And she was <laughs> like in her early 20s. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Ghostbusters sketch. Remember that dumb Ghostbusters sketch? I don't think I do. It was a, she was, I can't remember who the other actress was in it, but was these women talking about how much they love Ghostbusters. And one of the people goes, my favorite Ghostbuster was the black one. And they go, but he didn't do that much. And I go, but I, if he, if he had done more. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was a lovely little sketch. Okay, so now listen, I got a clue for you. I, you don't know who's there yet. I haven't ruined it yet. No. Okay, so I've got a clue for you for to tell anybody who doesn't know, and I, I know this is a lot of lead up, but I'm very happy with this clue. <laughs> what I do is I come up with a picture and Alex has to guess what other Billy Joel song I'm referencing lyrically. And sometimes the worst clues obtuse. This one I think is pretty on the nose, but also, hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, first yeah. of all, before we say anything, can we all agree why did it never occur to us that Jared Fogle never learned to properly smile? Yeah. I don't know why we didn't realize that before. He Look at all his pictures. He's always smiling so like a guy who just had a smile described to him. <laughs> <laughs> As if I came in the room and I go, we want you to smile. What's that? Oh, God. Okay. Right. Um, you're, well, you're, well, you're not... You're not mad. You know, you know how you'll grit your teeth when you're mad? It's not that. You're in a good mood and you're showing your teeth. All right. All right. No, no, not mad. But look at the, look at that guy. Look at that put him, huh? Boy. <laughs> oh. Uh, so. You're so, cool. the pedophile. Indeed. And the person. Now. At the premiere of Iron Man 3. <laughs> right. So, Iron Man 3, let's go back in time to let people know that when he was at the premiere for Iron Man 3, they did not know he was a pedophile. Oh, fair. Okay. So, imagine you didn't know that about him. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and now, I'll give you one more hint. Um Imagine you used to be friends with him in high school. You didn't know he was a pedophile then either. Right. And you haven't heard, seen him in a long time. And you're <laughs> unfamiliar with his association with Subway. <laughs> what would you say to him? <laughs> oh, my God. Jared Fogle? <laughs> yeah, you, but you haven't seen him from since high school. Yeah. Oh, my God. Jared Fogle. You haven't seen him in a long time. It's been years. That's right. <laughs> How have you been? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you used to be good friends, but stuff happens. Sure. <laughs> I, just, I love how much of a slam dunk you think this is. It's funny to me because he's a pedophile. That's all there is to it. But here's what I'll say. You guys meant to be friends after high school because you were right. friends again you didn't know he was a pedophile this isn't right. your fault but you you haven't seen him you meant to see him but then what happened i drew we drifted apart yeah you drift what's another way to say you drifted apart <laughs> we stopped being friends uh, i'm just gonna say you lost touch <laughs> What's happening? 
You lost touch long ago. Hold on. I can't get a melody. You lost weight. I did not know. <laughs> oh my God, you're the worst. <laughs> right? Oh. Here's what made me laugh. This is why it made me laugh so hard, too, because I love Jim Gaffigan. I mentioned this earlier. Jim Gaffigan has a joke about Subway that when it comes up on Spotify, now is funnier than ever because it's an old joke. And he goes, I see that Jared from Subway. We all love Jared. <laughs> and it's, the context of that joke has changed so much. Amazing. I thought you were going for, uh, we all have a face that we hide away forever. <laughs> <laughs> that works really well. Um, and I love that on the little marquee or the thing behind him, it says one touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was the... One touch. It was definitely more than one. Ugh. Yeah, it was an orgy of evidence, I think. God. Oh. Yeah. You lost weight. Long ago, I did not know you could look so good after all these years. Hey, remember that time? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's why we're not friends anymore. <laughs> uh, oh uh, I know that's, I'm just terrible, but God, that made me laugh so hard when I thought of it. I was like, God, a picture of Jared Vogel. And it's just funny, out of context, that there's a lyric where Billy Joel is singing, you lost weight. <laughs> yeah. You lost weight. I did not know. You get ever look so that's such a good man. There's a song where he knocks it out of the park lyrically, right? Yeah. And just vocally. Yeah. Absolutely Apparently. top of his powers. Top of his powers. Still his biggest selling album. Oh uh, man. My favorite uh, Jared Fogel joke I made at the time was uh, I would thought for a second that I would not eat at Subway anymore, but I think it's important to separate the, the sandwich from the sandwich artist. <laughs> uh, That's a good joke. Good joke. It's almost yeah. worth bringing him back for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is he back in the news for anything? No. Oh. Uh, the funny thing about him, and do this at home, by the way, I encourage you to do this, is start Googling Jared Fogel just to see what the autofill in is. Oh. Because the funniest autofill is, whatever happened to Jared Fogel? <laughs> so there are people who are like, they'll see a Subway commercial with, I don't know, Will Arnett or whoever's doing it now. Right. Um, and they'll think, you know, I really liked, I liked their old campaign. And why did they change that? Huh? <laughs> well, that was a pretty successful campaign. It's <laughs> <laughs> like people who are baffled 25 years later. Oh, what happened to, what happened to the Noid? <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're like, the Noid got convicted. Yeah. Yeah. For, for those homicides. What's endangerment at least my well, favorite joke was when the noid got uh, convicted of murder was on carson because you remember uh, he did that joke where he goes uh, apparently he wasn't just ruining pizzas i loved that bit and then I, he just held for 10 minutes yeah and uh and uh, i believe ed said yes if i'm recalling yeah. correctly i might be remembering wrong but i think he said that yes he probably, oh. if he was there, that's what he definitely said. He said he, he's not just ruining pizzas. Um, do you remember, speaking of horrifying mascots, Mac Tonight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> God. Oh, one of my writers is obsessed with Mac Tonight and keeps putting it in jokes. <laughs> we finally did one on the air. Just Good. To shame, just to shame him. Did anyone laugh? A handful of people. And then I think Seth asked the audience if they remembered Mac tonight and like there was a smattering, which shocked me because I didn't think anybody would remember. Yeah. 
I remember at the time, and it, we talked earlier about how I like to be mad at stuff that I have no business being mad at. <laughs> Matt Tonight made me so mad because I liked the song Mac the Knife and it felt wrong. <laughs> and listen, it's a good Mac the Knife is a good song, but in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. Probably should have been focused elsewhere. Mac the Knife is a song of my generation. No, 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 it isn't. <laughs> it wasn't the song of anyone's generation. Yeah, no. It was I, a nice song. I couldn't guess within 40 years when it was written. No, you definitely couldn't because it's from Three Penny Opera originally, right? Right. And so it probably 1800s or something amazing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so yeah. bad with times. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, do you have some trivia for me? And, and it doesn't have to involve noted sandwich pitch man and pedophile Jared Fogel. But it can, but it, I yeah. don't know how him and Billy Joel would cross. Well, they both lost a lot of weight. Oh, well, and you did not believe they could look so good. You did not. I don't think uh, <laughs> Billy Joel was having Subway sandwiches on a daily, though. No, no. Uh, I have a very easy one. All right, bust. Um, in the song, The Entertainer. Sure complains about having a song cut down to 305. Do you know what song that's referring to? Oh. Oh, man, that's pretty cool, because I know that the radio edit of The Entertainer is 305 for fun. I know that, but that's not the song he's complaining about. So I'm going to say Piano Man? It's Piano Man. See okay. how easy? That was easy. Originally runs 538. Oh, man. How many other people were at that bar? I don't know. Gary is the bouncer at the piano bar. There's a dog working the coat check. <laughs> that was a whole story. A whole separate story about the dog works the coat check. He'll kick out the belligerent drunks. Yeah, and the dog that does the coat check. God, that's really funny. I want to hear the fucking long version. Yeah, man. Or is the long version the one on the album and the radio edit leaves out Paul? <laughs> right. No, or most. is it just more piano? It's probably just more choruses and stuff. You know what's funny? I bet you nowadays he's like, yeah, you guys were right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. He's like, mm, doesn't it feel a little long still? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a dick I was. Oh, well. <laughs> That's really great. Oh, Piano Man. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you something about your trivia question. It's easy mainly because you told me it's easy. Oh, yeah. Because first That's time. Like that mentalists use. Yeah, you pretty much told me it was Piano Man. And now it looks like I knew that or I'm smart or something. But <laughs> trivia is not my thing. My, you know, uh, every, I think I've told you this every now and then I'm, I'm the surprise team member at a bar trivia night who wins it for the guys. Right. But that's because I've been carried the whole night and there was this weird question that, like one time there was a question about American Sign Language and it was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Deaf sister. Uh, I said this off the air and I, I'm embarrassed I said it off the air. I should say it on the air. Yeah. Your, your mustache and beard look amazing. Oh, come on. Thanks, they, man. They look great. Yeah. Credit Mike at the Vanderbilt Barber. And you did this real quick because you went on vacation to? Went to Portugal. And every dude in Portugal has the same haircut and beard style. And I made my barber do it when I got home. That's why, by the way, when you fly into Portugal, there's a big billboard that says, Welcome to Portugal, home of the nice beard and mustache. Yeah. You go, I think you go through customs and then you go through a barber. <laughs> right in the taxi line. <laughs> oh, shit. You are a funny man. You're nailing it today. This is fun. I missed you. This is great. This is great. Uh, this is how you do it. 
Now, listen, the song I picked, I'm going to apologize ahead of time because I'm pretty sure it's not good, but we're almost done. It's from the album Cold Spring Harbor. Oh, and it, finally. And it is, the, <laughs> and I think we got two more. One of them is the song that's a hit, uh, but the album is You Can Make Me Free. You Can Make Me Free. And I think it's not great, but it's fine. It's certainly not the worst. Do it because I think just a lot of the titles sound similar. Right? We didn't do that, right? Nope. Oh yeah, look at that. We didn't do it. Nope. And uh, and I was and more or less what I did is I looked at the list of songs and went, well, I think it's got to be this one. Let's let's close the books on Cold Spring Harbor pretty soon. Yeah, fuck out of there. We're going to be doing episode 63. Let me write that down. And then let me forget where I wrote that down. And then struggle to figure out what episode we're doing. Because th that's how I roll. Uh, and, Don't go to No, I'm not. To, to, to please you? For any reason. Oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, possible. Yeah, don't go changing because change is bad. <laughs> change is very hard to do. And yeah. we're all tired. Don't grow. That would be one of them. Or change, get better and learn things. I can't believe we got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Whatever you do, don't change your hair. I'll be mad for some reason. Because I'm controlling in a really weird way. <laughs> Uh, uh, by the way, I, I don't want pleasant conversation. Oh, boy. Well, well, you're really laying the groundwork. <laughs> I don't. I ha, Even before we had a show, I always thought that lyric was weird. Yeah. I don't want pleasant conversation. Well, a lot of the day is made up with trying to get by. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do go to movies or do all kinds of things, but a lot of the day is in between things. Yeah. And we're That's... gonna need to be fucking pleasant. We need a, a buffer. <laughs> oh shit, that oh. just dawned on me how fucking yeah, of course you got divorced. Don't be talking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk, dye your hair. Or change. Yeah. Also, I don't want you talking to your family anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, listen. Don't talk to your family anymore. 